Welcome to a two-part video on Flow Virtual Networking in AWS. We're going to take a look at the architecture in this video. And in the second video, we're going to do a deployment and configure NoNAT with the Transit Gateway. So let's jump in. Flow Virtual Networking for AWS was released in 6.8. This allows Nutanix customers to have consistent network operations for their hybrid multi-cloud, regardless of if they're doing their work in their private data center or deploying into their favorite hyperscaler or maybe even their favorite service provider. Flow Virtual Networking is jam-packed with features and now you have a common API to orchestrate and automate across all of your environments. Flow Virtual Networking uses a two-tier topology for overlay networking. Starting at the bottom, the user VPCs, which can be created in Prism Central or via API, will have a route that can be added to send their traffic to an external NAT or an external no NAT. In this case, their traffic is going directly to a NAT. From there, traffic will flow to a peer-to-peer -peer link, which is acting as an external network for the transit VPC. This peer-to-peer -peer link is hosted on one of your ENIs on the bare metal nodes. This elastic network interface has typically throughput up to 25 gigs per second. So it's going to be great for a variety of use cases. This representation is showing a three node bare metal cluster in AWS. Our peer to peer link is hosted currently on node two. The subnet that gets used for this in this diagram is called the FVN subnet. It is available on all of the nodes within your bare metal cluster. In this diagram, we're using a slash 24. That is the minimum for this subnet. This subnet needs additional addresses, not only for the primary ENI IPs, but also to provide floating IPs. So in this diagram, if we look at the SNAT IPs of both our green and blue VPC, we see that these IPs are coming from that FVN subnet. That subnet will be fully routable within AWS. So it really makes it easy for communication to happen into the overlay network. Here we have a diagram of one of our hosts in AWS. As mentioned, AWS has native networking, which you can easily add native subnets into your NC2 cluster and carry on. So the left side of the diagram is showing a typical deployment. And then on the right side, we have our flow virtual networking. We can see that they're connecting two ENIs on our environment. Now, typically there's only one ENI associated with the, the flow virtual networking, but it is possible to have multiple ENIs on the same host. If we had a situation where we were using more floating IPs or we had lots of VPCs in our environment and where we were going over the 49 secondary IPs available on an AWS Elastic Network interface. We also see that we have some colored boxes around our ENIs. We've always deployed with security groups so we've had a management security group, which is noted in green. That's protecting our HV and CVM. So you can control these security subgroups from the NC2 console, but you can edit them just like any other AWS security group. We also notice that our native networking stack and the flow virtual networking stack are protected by the UVM security group. This is important as you're allowing traffic into the 
overlay network or even the native networking, but you'll have to adjust the security group to allow traffic in. New in 6.8, we introduced a security group for Prism Central. Prism Central is getting its own separate subnet and separate security group. So this offers a better way of securing Prism Central. And you will also have to edit this for allowing traffic in. There are some default rules as in 6.8, you can deploy Prism Central with Flow Virtual Networking together, which really leads to a fast, consistent user experience. Like using Flow Virtual Networking on-prem, we have a user VPC redirect chassis. For every VPC that you deploy, it will use uh, redirect chassis to exit out of the user VPC. It is only one redirect chassis per VPC, but it will be rebuilt if the node goes down. So if you have many user VPCs, they will be spread out through the cluster. We see here that on our BR overlay that we are consuming IPs from the Flow Virtual Networking subnet and where we had our source net IPs, we can tell that the peer-to-peer -peer link is all hosted on node three. Let's take a look at the communication flow. So for user flow VPC, we have two VMs, VM1, VM2 on node two. The traffic will go to the user VPC redirect chassis that's hosted on node one. From there, the traffic will be redirected out through the transit VPC on node three, where the peer-to-peer -peer link is hosted. Setting up a NATed path within AWS is fairly easy, and so is NoNAT, but the NoNAT does require an additional step and a requirement for use of the AWS Transit Gateway. Now, we do have our diagram showing the FVN subnet where our NoNAT and NAT are hosted, along with some flow v VPCs below that. To get traffic into our overlay environment, we set an external routable prefix within Prism Central in the transit gateway. And then for any user VPCs, we will also set the ERP, which can be a shorter uh, side arrange as long as it's following into the overall external routable prefix set in the transit VPC. When we do this, the software will automatically create an ENI pointing to the peer-to-peer -peer link for us so our traffic knows how to get into our overlay networking. There is one manual configuration after you attach your VPC of the network where your bare metal is deployed. You will also have to manually add the ERP prefix into the route table to point to the VPC. From there, the software will see the ENI and the route in the route table and traffic will begin to flow, assuming you've made those security group changes. Let's take a look at our AWS console. Here in our transit gateway route table, we see that we have a static route at the bottom, 172.50.0.0 slash 20. This would be our ERP for our environment. And so then on our route table, you will see a listing here for that same prefix showing up, which will happen automatically on the right where it's going to the AWS ENI that was created automatically for you. Now you're at the point where you can start deploying virtual machines on your bare metal cluster, whether, whether it be with native networking or flow virtual networking, you will be able to route anywhere within AWS. Automation is doing the heavy lifting for setting up flow virtual networking in AWS. 
please stay tuned for the second video where we take a look at the setup. See you in the next video.